Go. Hi there, it's Pete the Hipster King from the Hairy Game Lords, and this evening we, Hairy Game Lords on lockdown, have been playing USS Freedom by Dreamcraft Games. What did we think? Stay tuned to Boldly Go, where we have never been before, and we will find out. So, USS Freedom, literally starting today on Kickstarter. It's been live for five hours and already well on the way to funding. Um, so definitely go and che check it out. Um, we were playing basically one round uh, with Vanton, one of the designers. I think he was in charge mainly of the mechanics of the game, of building the mechanics of the game by the sounds of it. And boy, what a big game this is. It was immense. We played, in essence, one series of combat, um, which would be part of one kind of little section of the game that as a, as a campaign can be, was it 32 sections long? Was that right? Was it 36? Over 30 parts to a campaign. And we were in, we were in one section of one of those parts. And we had, well, I don't know, I'll speak for myself. I had an absolute blast playing this. Um, it, there's just so much to it. We'll bounce around each of us and we'll all say, you know, as per, but um, one of the things I loved to, to kick us off was the first thing we saw when we got in, it laid out the table beautifully and just the, um, just the epic look of this game. So when, we haven't seen the physical prototype we've been playing on TTS, but you've got this huge rocket ship, which is going to be on a neoprene mat. These guys know how to make games well. You've then got um, your your space area, which has got all the planets and the sectors on. Again, neoprene mat with die, die holes cut out so you can keep each of the different um, races, keep your, um, is that the right word? <laughs> yeah, die hole. Yeah, there's, I don't know whether, but where, you, where you're now. able to sort of score how die you're, your relationship with the different um, races that you'll meet in the game and then you've got your kind of landing area which is the you know the area where you if you battle hand-to-hand -hand combat with various monsters on the ground so you've got you can be flying around space you can be battling in your spaceship or you can beam down onto a planet so already you can see that th this game in itself is a ta a beautiful table hog um of just <laughs> unbelievable components and that's not even talking about the characters. And I'm going to shut up there and let somebody else jump in and talk about character because my day is ho, 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 beautiful. <laughs> oh, man, yeah, I'll talk about that. So the the theme of the game, like when you look at it first, it's exploring space. It's basically Star Trek, the board game. Uh, but they've added a really lovely, quirky theme on it in that um, all of the crew are cosplayers from a convention and the cleaning lady and a random priest who's just walked in and um it's one of those ones where like they've kind of they've taken all of the dreams that they've had they've taken the lid off it and just gone go free into space explore and so if you ever wanted to be harry potter pilot i mean barry hotter piloting a spaceship um or um lana, lana croft, croft. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um like all of these um these characters all the aliens all the ships everything is drawn beautifully really really good art uh, instead of my instead of miniatures they've gone for standees which actually i prefer sorry guys these guys love their miniatures and licking them and all the other things that you do with a miniature i don't know what you do um but the standees you got loads and those those guys they're quite kind of versatile um but um yeah, they've got so much going on, so many different people on the ship. So imagine like um, each different game that you play, you choose your crew dependent on your needs. And so every single crew member's got their own special abilities, um, which level up as you go through the game is that it's also got a bag building element, which is very cool. I love that. Um, and, and when Vanton told us it was literally at the very end of the game, he said, oh, you know, we've beaten this ship now. And one of the things you win from beating this ship is you get to use ether, which are the crystals in your bag. So it's lovely little crystals. Who doesn't love crystals in a game? Every single component is good. Um, but you can remove a pore. You, you take two out and you're able to put 
you're able to swap one out with one of the other crystals you've got for a better crystal. So you can start improving the quality of what you're going to be drawing, which gives you better quality actions because each player has got various different color actions depending on the crystals you draw. So, oh, it was beautiful. And that was like 30 seconds at the end. Oh, there is this. And it's like, that's an amazing thing to add to the game. Sorry. Yeah. I just loved it. Oh, that, really... it's, um, it's um, very nicely done because like everyone's, so different all the different characters that he plays are different and um as a team you play different characters each each time so you're not just hogging the same ones every time unless you really want to do that for some reason but um even then when you when you are um piloting your ship you're manning the different rooms and you want to get the right people in the right rooms or able to kind of bolster your crew in a certain way it's very cleverly done like for me the bit that stood out was uh, what is essentially a simulator for a running a spaceship. Uh, so you're in combat, you've got um, a spaceship layout, you've got different rooms that you can move between, and um, you can upgrade your spaceship as you go through the game, the campaign. Um, so we started off with a pretty beasty one because he was being kind to us uh, with lots of different yeah. weapons in it. Um, but um, it's got plenty of kind of scope for a kind of rags to riches story and um i don't know later on in the campaign essentially you've got like um some plucky cosplayers um who are defeating titans in space um so like in terms of kind of just boldness and scope it's massive like i i think um there aren't enough games that try to be so big but did they pull it off? What do you think? From me, I was going to wait for Dave. Did Dave, oh, you come sorry. in? Come on, you know, sir, come Dave on. Meditating. We're quiet. Yeah. Come on, Dave. He's uh, sitting on his own. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think um, I really like the fact that everybody's got their own set of skills, all the different characters, but Yes, they've got some particular powers, but um, they don't. You don't have to use the ones that are really good in one area. You can sort of cobble together um, a bit of firepower from sort of those that are left over when you really need your shields, um, or you can go all all out attack. And yeah, you know, it'd be nice to have a few shields at the back. Maybe, oops, we've exploded. <laughs> It didn't but, happen uh, to us this time. It didn't. Uh, I was. I think it could. <laughs> I, yeah, um, and I like the way um, when you come up against sort of the enemy spaceships and what have you, you do have a choice of are you going to actually fight them or are you going to try and disengage? Which yeah, we we got a bit of a, a leg up for um, for the bit of the game that we played. I, I get a feeling if we'd met that guy with a substantially weaker spaceship things could have gone trouble. things could have gone slightly slightly worse <laughs> shall we say but uh, i think it was very because of the whole cosplay um people ending <laughs> up on a spaceship and gradually actually ending up with the powers that they're pretending to have which was really cool it was i think it was more galaxy quest than star trek yes yes um, it never, was kind never. of uh, by Grabthar's hammer. What a game! <laughs> <laughs> and was, yeah. the sort of the sense of humour wasn't it wasn't stupid humour in a let's <laughs> just laugh along. But if you've watched loads of sci-fi, there were lots of just little nods to all sorts of stuff. The characters are really obvious, sort of nods yeah. to Thor and. Lara Croft and um... one of the other things I really liked about it is how um, well it's, it's a sandbox isn't it so like there's not one solution to every problem so um, uh, we got shown for example um, an example of a monster that you fight on the ground so you beam down to the ground you fight the monster and it's like a tactical kind of melee type thing but actually if you'd kind of pushed in that certain direction and you could try and tame it if that's if that's your, your thing try and tame the the 
four horned beast. I don't know. Yeah, and there is. I've got a feeling that for some of those things, I don't know for definite, but I know that the way it works on the star map, on the interstellar map, if you like, you will. Your aim is the whole game overall campaign aim is that you befriend one alien race to the point at which mm. they will. You, they owe you and they will come and take you back to Earth and save Earth. That's kind of the overarching campaign aim. So you have to build alliances. Um, and it, I could imagine how some of those quests might be. You go and s smash up that area or you go and kill these guys that we're in combat with. Um, but also you might need to go and capture or you could see how it would be really, you know, I could see how mm. quests would develop to where you might be going to get, you might need to go and get a particular species and you might need to go down to certain planets that are more likely to have those species on them to try and find them and encounter them i don't you know it's got that feel of the way that it kind of you would have to go and find certain things on those quests to try and gain um, popularity with that particular race but obviously gaining popularity with one race puts pits you against another race that they're not friends with. So if you then encounter those on your travels, you're more likely to going to have to go into combat because they're going to be coming at you in an attacking way. Um, there's also, you know, so there's just- I did, Yeah, I, I did really love, again, I wasted large amounts of my childhood uh, playing Elite. Um, not the new Elite, I'm talking about the Elite on the spectrum because, <laughs> you know, old. Was it a text um, event to me? No, it wasn't. It was, Polygon graphics, thank you very much. Um, <laughs> definitely. Uh, but yeah, the whole in the space bit, you've got different planets where you can go and buy um, different things, sell them, you know, buy low, sell high, start carting around uh, contraband and alcohol and what have mm. you. And the sort of the police type race, if they bump into you, they'll have words to say. Um, there's also like big grubbly monster ship that'll. Um, we didn't run into that. I'm fairly sure that would have just eaten us um, yeah. alive. But again, yeah, there's several different races on the, the sort of the space board, which you can trade with. You can buy. You can fight. You can choose sort of what to do with them. Um, and then you've got the sort of the spaceship board, and then that you can uh, do your space combat in. And then you've got the ground board. That you can fight the beasties and beam down to the planet. So yeah, it just had sort of the whole thing. Um, madness. No, I know. I think one of the, for me, what I absolutely loved, um, and the potential in this game is huge for. I guess is, you know, I've got a couple of sandbox games, things like you know, I really enjoy whether this is going to, you know, it might turn you off my views on gaming, but I really like playing Western Legends. But the thing with Western Legends for me is that there are, you know, there are only a f yes, there's plenty you can do, but you're kind of you're moving up and down the same tracks, and you're just kind of right. I'll go and do cattle, or I'll I'll go and win money on poker, or I'll go after. Um, bandits or you know and there are set paths that you follow depending on what you can change up but I think this one is is what I class it when you think of what a sandbox should be which is literally you can create your own game your own story you just go this feels like the world is big enough and the universe is big enough for you to really go off and do what you want in it and to pick it really is choose your own adventure and as a group you will you will decide who we're going to work with who we're going to work for who we're going to go against what are we going after what how do we want to choose our way around this um system and because you can Yes, that it feels less. You know, I was talking about the old computer games that were like rail shooters, where you have to go the certain way to complete the game. This one feels like you, you, it is open world, and you can play it one way and win one way, and you could then start a new campaign. You could start with a different, go into a slightly different area of the map, choose to ally with them, and your whole adventure and all the encounters would be completely different. And I just think that level of expanse i don't know how people do it because it just blows my mind but i just thought it was amazing you if you and at the price point for you know 61 pounds i think it is at the minute plus postage will be on top of that no doubt but you are getting a huge game um that yeah fair enough you you know some people won't play the whole of it or get nowhere near playing the whole of it but playing one round was just so much fun so you mm. could play lots of individual one rounders and still have a brilliant time or you could try and play the full campaign for those of you that go after a campaign game. This has got it all. I, I just and just so clever and so many lovely little 
bits and as for the you know i've seen pictures and you can see them on the kickstarter of the quality of the components they these guys know what they're doing just they've done it so well and then what a brilliant theme and it's not pasted on it oozes theme throughout so it will be immersive too sorry i'm talking a lot i just loved it it's, it's, it's really good i think the other thing that is i really like about this one is you very much feel like a crew together oh, oh. yes you do it's oh. a hairy game lord cat oh my <laughs> trying to uh, muscle his way in the game lords um no it's like it's a great crew feeling so you're very much in yeah. it together you like you really have to work together otherwise you will die in space you all benefit together as well there's no there's no one kind of hunting the glory for themselves it's very much um a, a true co-op yeah yeah true co-op yeah like gloomhaven like I remember when we played Gloomhaven and Pete went off and just basically. There's a bit of. My, I'm sure my back has still got a few um, slight marks on well, it. Whereas, yeah, this is well, properly yeah. um, sink or swim um, together. Yeah, and the way as well, you could play. You really could easily, happily play this solo as well. Um, so, yeah. Mm. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. So, make sure. Oh, sorry. Market. I didn't. just can't believe how massive it is. I know. Is, yeah. I guess that's the <laughs> only thing you could say as a possible concern is just how big it is. But for me, that that's not a negative. It just means you might not get through the whole of it. Um, oh, but Yeah, that's the only thing I am. Um, the only negative I can think of, really, is that there's... I guess there's get a to lot see, of game to learn. Kind of like Battlestar Galactica. You get a feeling you're never actually going to get to Earth. Yeah, we'll possible. get back to Earth. <laughs> Please. <laughs> so from the hipster king a massive massive double thumbs up i can't recommend this enough and we only had a couple of hours on tts and that's just blown my mind so definitely go and check this out at a price point i don't think you can I, i'm not sure you could beat this at yeah. the price it's coming in at. it's a hell of a lot of gain and yeah I'd be a, I'd be a double as well i'd drop my phone though <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll give i'll give two thumbs up for james but no um fantastic go check game. it out go check it out <laughs> yeah, yeah and if you like what we do like and subscribe please too dave is boldly going please go <laughs> ouch so uss freedom we so, uh well, we, my uh, hair had gone like that so i just <laughs> chopped it off because i couldn't stand the shame <laughs> So tonight we've been playing USS Freedom. We got the chance with the um, thanks for that slightly bitty James with his deliberate hair look. <laughs> it, it's meant it to is, look like that. It is meant to look like that. He oh, got yeah. up this morning and went, "That is the look I'm going for today." <laughs> it's a good yeah. look. Well, it's a look. Okay, review. Engage. <laughs>